Welcome to the real world. My name is Cameron. Thank you so much for joining us on this new episode of the real world podcast episode 48. We're talking all about fast and furious. Thank you so much for joining us here on the real world YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. We're all about movies here. And today we are talking about one of our favorite franchises of all time fast and furious i'm joined by my brother carson hey because the fast and furious podcast is not complete without family it's got all about family <laughs> that's right so i uh, hope you guys enjoy this episode if you're a fast fan you're sure to get a lot out of it even if you're not you'll probably get a kick out of us uh two guys who uh weren't big fans for a while and then kind of got into it a little bit yeah, later yeah uh but now we're massive fans so i'm uh, <laughs> very excited to talk about all of these movies, there's 10 of these movies, 11, actually, if you count the spinoff. Sure. Um, so a lot of movies to talk about. You count the other spinoffs. Right. Obviously, we're going to review Fast X, which just dropped this weekend. And so let's kick things off, though, first with some movie news. All right. So we're kicking things off with movie news, as we usually do here on the podcast. A lot of stories to cover, a lot of breaking news this week. So I wanted to start things off. With the Fast and Furious franchise. Okay. So Vin Diesel's on the red carpet with Michelle Rodriguez. As he often is. Being interviewed. Yes. Right? Yeah. The interviewer asks him, uh, when are we going to see Dom next? Dominic Toretta, your character. Is there going to be a spinoff? Is that, is that, the, is that the Fast X Fast premiere? Fast X premiere. Okay. What does he say? What's his response? He says, after the studio saw this one, they don't just want it to be a two-parter. They want it to be a trilogy oh great so fast x is the first part in a trilogy of fast and furious films so fast so X part two the trilogy finale that's right fast x part two is coming in a couple years and then fast x part three after that fast <laughs> x part two and fast x part three that's right i wonder if they'll be fast 11 and 12 i don't know so, wow, that's 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 a lot that's <laughs> that's a lot of movies it's a lot of movies so Wait, especially because this was like the end right exactly end of the road right the end, end of the, of the road, road begins begins right it just begins at the beginning a middle and an end exactly exactly <laughs> three acts <laughs> um so anyways that was a bit of news that dropped that uh has yet to be confirmed by the studio but uh vin diesel is as good as the studio for me so uh, there we go all right moving on to some casting news beetlejuice 2 mm, okay is now in early days early pre-production i heard tim uh, burton is tim, back yeah tim burton's back and Michael uh, keaton's back yeah, yeah, yeah. Winona Ryder's back. Okay. Jenna okay. Ortega is that's, playing her daughter. Is it true that some of the showrunners from uh, Wednesday are involved as well? I heard they are involved. I, I heard so. they are involved. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that should be interesting. And then uh, some new cast members. Monica Bellucci okay. has been added to the cast, as well as Willem Dafoe. Of course. So that was a wow. pretty big addition. That's awesome. Um, yeah. The Green Goblin himself. That's right. That's right. Very curious to see what kind of character he's going to play. Uh, always fascinated by his performances. So that should be fun. Did you ever see that movie with him in a room by himself for two It's hours? not out yet. Is oh, it's it? not out. I don't think it's out. Did it come out? I don't know. I haven't seen a trailer for it in a long time. I to look it up. I think it was a limited release. Eesh. Pity. Another bit of casting news. Daisy Ridley, who we're big fans of from the Star Wars really? sequels. She is going to star in a new action thriller titled Cleaner from director Martin Campbell, wow. who directed... Casino Royale, mm -hmm. Mask of Zorro, GoldenEye. Green Lantern. A lot of great movies. <laughs> right. So uh, he's going to be at the helm of this. This follows an ex-soldier turned window washer. Oh. Who must rescue hostages when terrorists take over the skyscraper she is cleaning. So Die Hard, but from the perspective of a window cleaner. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. She's an ex-soldier, so obviously she knows sure. how sure. to handle a weapon yeah. and that kind of thing. So yeah, Die Hard in England is what I'm calling it. Okay. Because um, it's all set in London. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see what ends up coming of that. You know, we've had all kinds of Die Hard movies. Speed is Die Hard on a bus. Air sure, Force One is sure. Die Hard on a plane. Fast and Furious, Die Hard, kind of. Not really. More, more point break. <laughs> right. <laughs> point break. In your action movies. You're right. Off. You said you said Speed. And <laughs> right. I thought it was Point Break. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connection. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I get it. Too, too, too many jumps. <laughs> right. Can't make more than six jumps at a time. <laughs> 
another bit of casting news casting is underway for superman legacy right now yeah and a lot of interesting names are being thrown around everyone is speculating about who is superman who is lois who is jimmy who is lex all kinds of names are are swirling so we're not even going to mention all of them i just wanted to bring that up because obviously i'm a huge superman fan i'm Mm -hmm. very excited about this movie especially coming off of guardians of the galaxy volume three which was spectacular um james gunn did it he did it he he did the best mcu trilogy and he did it on purpose that's right uh, it was because he loves the audience. He does. Um, he does. <laughs> so very excited for Superman Legacy. Nicholas Holt's name was thrown out. David Cornsweat is a new guy I haven't heard much about. Okay. For Lois, uh, Emma Mackey, Rachel Brosnahan, mm. uh, Samara Weaving. Mm. Shooting is set to begin in January 2024. So he's cool. got plenty of time yeah. to find his right cast. Uh, some rumors say that Nicholas Holt actually may be playing Lacks instead of Superman. Interesting. Which would be an interesting pick. I like that. I like that I could see him as both. Yes, me too. He's a very good actor. So, my doppelganger. Um, <laughs> that movie is set for release July 11th, 2025. Next up, Arnold Schwarzenegger was interviewed. He's got a new movie coming out on streaming. I forget the name of it because it's one of those forgettable streaming films. A one teaser, of those teaser, teaser, if you will. He was interviewed and someone asked him about Terminator. You know, when's the next Terminator coming out? Uh, Dark Fate was years ago. Yeah, was not well received. Did not make a lot of money. And yeah, people want to know: Is he coming back? Is he going to do a bigger and better one? What? What's going on? But he's done. He said he's done the franchise. He's he's over it. Uh, he, he's he's not not interested in coming back. <laughs> but the franchise, he said, is not finished. Obviously, there's still sure. money to be made, and so they're working on something. But he doesn't know what it is. I say go back to basics. Make a small scale horror film. Totally just like reboot the first it. One. Totally, totally reboot, reboot it. it. I mean, reboot the timeline or... at this point is, is in shambles. <laughs> it's true. So to start it's over, true. it's true. Make a small movie. Yeah, that's why Terminator works. Right, but just don't call them Sarah Connor or Kyle Reese. Don't, don't even make it a new. Story. Don't even need those characters. Don't just, need to tell that story. Just use Skynet and the basic premise to sure. make a new sure. story. Yeah, that's what I would do. Um, or another... flip it on its head. A person goes back to the goes into the future to kill a Terminator. There you go. Something I don't know. Do something <laughs> crazy. As long as it's a good story. Exactly. Another franchise he was asked about was Conan. This okay. is the franchise he actually wants to return to. Oh, okay. Says, That'd be cool. We need to make one more Conan. Call it King Conan. Wow. I'm on the throne. That's what he wants to do. <laughs> All right. He says okay. he wants to do it in the same vein as Unforgiven. Wow. So kind of like you know, Unforgiven epic. is like. Bunny Swood's final Western, yeah, like his yeah, yeah. big return to the genre that made him yeah. famous. An epic fantasy yeah. Logan story. Exactly. Yeah. Logan. Okay. Totally. Cool. So I'm all game for that because I like the Conan movies. I actually prefer Conan the Destroyer to the Barbarian, which most people don't. I've never seen any of them. You got to check them out. Another bit of casting news, Venom 3, which is gearing up to start shooting any day now. We're still doing more of those. Should we tell Edgy Afor has joined the cast? He's best known as Baron Mordo. Oh, okay. From Doctor Strange. Yeah. Now, the question is, is he playing the same character? Because... Oh, is he playing Baron Mordo? Right. Is Venom 3 yeah. MCU adjacent? And is he... No. You don't think so? That would make no sense. <laughs> Why not? They're doing the multiverse saga Baron right Mordo... And Venom, why not? They meet. They have a they have a fight. Why? <laughs> I don't know. What are they doing? I don't know. I don't know. He could be playing a totally different character. He probably is, and that's going to make things even more confusing. <laughs> because they, now he plays two crossover. different characters well, because in a Venom already... joined universe, right? But Sony and Marvel like, and the MCU is like, does it really? Because Vulture's in Morbius, and it's like Venom was in No Way Home, and it's like, it's a mess. Mess. It's a big fat mess. I agree. And so, the Sinister Six movie is gonna make it all make sense, apparently. <laughs> Avi's got a plan. All right. The last bit of news we had here are two, two more pieces of news, actually. Eddie Murphy is supposedly going to play Inspector Clouseau in the new Pink Panther film. So they're looking to reboot the Pink Panther film series. They did it with Steve Martin a couple decades ago. And now they're bringing it back. This is embarrassing. With Eddie Murphy. This is embarrassing. We need to stop. <laughs> we're, we're, we've got, we've taken this too far. And you know who's directing it? Who's directing it? Jeff Fowler, director of Sonic the Hedgehog live action film. I can already see <laughs> the screen, just my eyes glazing over it. A bunch of nonsense. We just need to stop with all, 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 all this. All these movies need to just die. <laughs> 
We yeah, need to get I, past that. We I need to get like, all that out of our system. I like the original. The original With Peter Sellers, Pink, Pink, Pink Panther. Panther from the '60s. I've never seen it. It's good. I've never. It's seen a good it. movie. It's funny. I don't, I don't know it's much about Pink Panther at all. Comedy. I just. They're, they're, that's a name I recognize. It's a name that's you know whatever, and it's yeah. going to make money, and yeah. it's like they're they're murder mystery comedies. Is what they are. Okay. Think Clue. Kind clue. Of clue. Yeah. A little movie bit. Clue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Think about so, a good movie. Maybe it'll right. be a good movie. Right. <laughs> exactly. Probably not. We always hope. Last bit of news here: Jackie Chan Ooh. is being tapped to return to the Karate Kid franchise. You mean the Kung Fu Kid franchise? Kung Fu Kids, what it should have been called, with Jaden Smith. Yeah. We don't know if this is going to be a Jaden Smith sequel. If Jaden Smith's coming back, we just know they've been working on this new Karate Kid movie, which for some reason is not connected to Cobra Kai. That's um, okay. I think that's a good thing, actually. I don't know because Cobra I, I Kai has gone it. down the toilet. Even so. They're coming out with the final season, and everyone's going to watch it. That's true. <laughs> but it's going to be the end. And the and cast is gonna... great. The That's cast true. of that movie, if they had a great script, they could be awesome. That's true. That's true. But what would you do, even do with that? It's like, know. would you have the Karate Kid? Call it Cobra it? Kai, first of all. Don't call it Karate Kid, because yeah. too many Karate Kid movies. The next Karate Kid. The next Karate Kid I, I like mean... a lot. I actually think that movie's awesome. I'm, I'm a big The Next Karate Kid fan. I like it more than Karate Kid 3. I like it more well, than... Well, that's not hard. I like it more than 2, I think, as well. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll have to have a karate podcast whenever... This karate cast. Comes, karate cast, whenever this comes out. <laughs> We're doing the fast cast today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fast and furious. Right. So that's it for movie news. We're going to jump into some trailer talk. Some trailers dropped this week, and we wanted to discuss Extraction 2. Have you seen Extraction? I have not seen Extraction. I know it's this Chris Helmsworth uh, in the same vein as Terminal List looking action. It's better, than that. it's better than that. Okay. It's the, dire- it's the director is the stunt coordinator for Captain America Civil War, okay. Winter Soldier, okay. that's... Infinity War, Endgame. He's the stunt coordinator. He's like, I want to go make a little action movie yeah. with Chris Hemsworth. That's best. And that's, so that's they went made this little cool action movie for Netflix that's just low budget. It's just handheld camera. Is it good? Or is it just it's fine? very it's very good as far as the action goes. Okay. The story is very simple, which I think is actually smart. Sure. Story is very simple. You got Chris Hemsworth just playing a simple character. Simple military guy. Simple ex-military yeah. out to protect a kid. Okay. Which is cool. And he's like, he's a teenage kid though. So it's not a little kid. All right. All right. So it's not all like right. my spy or something like where it's, you know, some big guy yeah. has a little, okay. it's, a com- it's not a comedy. Yeah. yeah. It's a very intense action movie. Okay. Um, but it's very well shot. Some good wonders in there that are really fun to watch. So I recommend it. This one looks like more of the same. Looks like they're trying to top themselves going bigger, bigger budget. More of the same. But it look one thing that's hopeful about it is it looks like it's going to be a more personal story. That's good. You know, which we're going to get because we don't really know much about Chris Hemsworth's character, Tyler Rake. <laughs> Tyler um, Rake. Tyler Rake. Oh, best boy. friend, Bob Shovel. Um, <laughs> we're going to get the whole backstory, it looks like, in this one. So it'll cool. be interesting. Um, next up, the trailer for Haunted Mansion. I saw this trailer. Drop. So the next see. trailer, the second trailer. And uh, look, this looks like fun, silly. Oh, Wilson. You know, yeah, he's oh, always he's funny. funny. He's, he's funny. funny. Funny guy. Rosario Dawson. He's, he's kind of, in and of himself, he's kind of a joke. Right. He's he done knows, movies. He knows that. He's done somewhat serious movies that I actually really like. Yeah. Midnight in Paris, I right, love. Sure, but, sure. Um, yeah, he's totally owned up to his kind of memeish right, status right. at this point. Yeah. Danny DeVito's in there. Danny DeVito's in it. It, it looks like it's going to be somewhat in the same vein as the original Haunted Mansion movie. Kind of, but this and one does look like it's more based on the ride exact then like literally know, in the trailer it says fr- from the creators of hearts of the caribbean yeah right, right it right. seems like it's going to be in that, that vein. story the lore right. of mm-hmm. the ride exactly is what it'll be more like more like how pirates was to the pirates ride yes yes and that i'm so, excited about yeah that should be good definitely um final trailer for mission impossible dead reckoning part one dropped this week as well which we got to see in theaters when we saw fast x bigger stunts <laughs> more action <laughs> every Shit. movie more emotion. How can they do that with seven films? More dramatic characters. <laughs> Every time. Tom Crazy. Cruise can't stop. He'll never stop. He'll yeah. never stop. Uh, literally, literally, somebody go, somebody went, woo, whenever he started running. <laughs> yes. His run at this right. point is iconic. <laughs> I know. Totally. Totally. Yeah. He went off the uh, the edge of the cliff with mm-hmm. the motorcycle mm-hmm. and the parachute. He's on yeah. the train. I mean, 
just looks like, you know, more of the same insanity that we've expected from him. Looks like, again, they're getting more personal with the story, though. It's good. And it's more of the team dynamic is going to play a big hey, role here. Those are the best lessons from the two best Mission Impossible movies, sure. three and four. Mm-hmm. The character of Ethan Hunt yep. and the team. Exactly. That's it. So very excited about that one. It's coming out in July. Next up, Killers of the Flower Moon. Have you seen this trailer? I've never even heard of this. Okay. What is this? This is... Is this... Is this, this, is this, Martin Scor- Scor- this is Martin Scorsese. Oh! oh. Yeah. Is, isn't he making, like, a Teddy Roosevelt movie or something? I heard about that, but I don't... Th- this is not that. This is not it's that. This is something that. else. This is... Is this science it's fiction? Scorsese goes west. Oh! Yeah. Oh, it's a western? It looks like there will be blood meets Goodfellas. Wow. It's going to be... Is it modern? Modern day western? It's all in the 20s. Oh, okay. 1920s. Oil. Find oil yeah. in some town. Yeah. And yeah. there's Native Americans there. Like you, like like you like... said, there will be blood. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. That sounds awesome. It does. It, it, it's got DiCaprio and it's got De Niro. <laughs> oh, boy. So his two most frequent collaborators yeah. are together. Yeah. Okay. I was hoping he'd try to branch off and do something a little... Why? When you work with the you're best, right. You're right. why change? You're right. So this looks very crazy, intense, amazing, very cinematic, beautiful. I can't wait to see it. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. It's, it's, it's finally film. happening, people. It's real. <laughs> and surprisingly, it looks pretty good. I know. It looks pretty good. <laughs> they like spent some money on it. Um, this morning I watched an hour long breakdown of the trailer really? of an avid fan who broke it down for like 50 minutes. That's crazy. It was, it was extensive, but, uh, okay. yeah, I mean, I know very little about it. Okay. Okay. I know it's Everything... kind of like, it looks like Willie's Wonderland with <laughs> that's actually Nicholas funny. Cage. That was brought up during the analysis. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I know, I know bits and pieces about the lore of the universe and everything. I've never personally played any of the games, right. but. I know uh, Game Theory made some videos on it. I've seen a few of those. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's 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 cool. It looks like what you would expect from a Five Nights in Friday's movie. Josh Hutcherson. Josh Hutcherson. I like him. I like yeah. him as an actor. I've always liked him since mm-hmm. uh, since the Zathura days. Yeah, Zathura. Wow, wow, it's going way back. back. <laughs> okay. I was going to say Richard Terabethia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that might have been before. Mm, it was around the same. I think Zathura okay. might have been a year before. Okay. All right. Okay. Next up was Oppenheimer. We got a full Oppenheimer tra- trailer finally. Um, we get a better idea of what this story is, what it's about, who's in it. Huge cast. Yep. I mean, this is Matt Damon, Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just all A-listers. All yeah. could lead their own. Film. Albert Einstein's in the movie. Albert Einstein. They brought him back. They brought him back digital, from the dead. digital D age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. An AI uh, plays <laughs> our, Albert Einstein. That would be the last thing Nolan would ever do. He would never give in to AI. Um, but yeah, this looks amazing. Like this movie is going to be crazy. Really, really well still, done. I'm excited. I still don't really get it. I don't really know what it's about. It looks like a historical drama, yes. which is weird for him. Yeah. Um. He did Dunkirk. He did Dunkirk, I guess. That's historical. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks fine. I, I just, I'm not that excited about it. You know what I mean? Okay. Because it, it doesn't seem like it. He, he shot it all in IMAX, and it's all about the atom yeah. bomb. And... Yeah. The biggest practical explosion we'll, we'll have ever seen. Hey, cool. He built a real atom bomb. He built a real <laughs> atom bomb, supposedly. <laughs> I don't know how they allowed this. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so yeah, looking forward to that. That comes out in July as well. Um, final trailer, The Creator. So The Creator is the next film from Gareth Edwards, oh, director of Rogue One. And Godzilla. And Godzilla, 2014. This is a sci-fi epic about AI taking over the world. So it's a modern day Terminator. Terminator. I robot. Is it modern day or is it in the future? It's in the future. What a compelling story. Uh, the trailer gives away way too much, so I'm not going to give it all away okay. because it gives away too much of the story. Would you story, say don't watch the trailer? Don't watch the trailer. Watch the first 10 seconds Skip of the trailer. It. First 10 seconds is all you can watch because the scale is huge. I mean, this is Rogue One on steroids. Wow. This is like huge battle sequences. Okay. Um, but yet a very, the, what I love about it is it's a very would you, would you story. Would you compare it to Lord of the Rings? 
As far I don't as know if I'd go that. I don't know if okay. I'd go that far. All right, that's a little too I'm big. Go that far. A little too big. It's it's. I would say it's probably comparable to Rogue One. Okay, probably comparable okay. to Rogue One. The story though, it's following where the the lead actor is John David Washington. Okay, from Ten, the protagonist from Sure, Tenet. Sure. He's he, the director. He's the the the, the oh, lead, lead, lead actor. actor. Lead, lead actor. Character. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So he's the lead character, and he makes a discovery that kind of like changes everyone's perspective on AI, basically. Okay. So it, it's one of these that you know he's having to go on a mission, kind of against everyone else, as this war is going on between AI and humanity. So like ten. Exactly. <laughs> so um, compelling story. Great cast. Oh. Cinematographer Greg Frazier, who we adore, the Batman, mm-hmm. the Lorian. I mean, he's shot so many just he's excellent. the best movies. That, that gives me a lot of a lot of hope yeah. for this movie. And the visuals in the trailer are just yeah. stunning. So okay. very excited about the creator. It comes cool. out on September 29th. Sweet. All right. So now it's time to review Fast X, the 10th film in the Fast and Furious franchise. Fast 10, your seatbelts. That's right. They did not title it that for some reason. <laughs> but um the title we get, let's talk about the titles first let's talk about the titles the titles of these movies <laughs> they're both infuriating and adorable i i adore <laughs> I the titles right. i adore right. these titles i think you're right. they're so too. silly it starts with the fast and the furious very okay. straightforward that's right. actually the title of a roger corman film okay. but they had to ask roger corman oh, if they could use it wow the very little known b movie from the 50s interesting the director of of fast one yeah rob cohen okay. had to get permission to use it Wow. And um, yeah, it's a perfect title. Totally sums up the film mm-hmm. perfectly. Street you know racing. What else? You know what else? It got people who are yeah. angry yeah. in the street race. Yeah. You know what else I would say perfectly sums up the movie in yeah. a title? Is the sequel, Too Fast, Too Furious. Too Fast, Too Furious. A lyric from a Ja Rule, Rule song <laughs> from the first film. Okay. And I didn't even know that. It is. It is. But Too Fast, Too Furious. It's the second movie. That's a hilarious thing. It's so time. great. It's so great. Now, where it starts to get crazy is the third movie. The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. This sounds like a spinoff. <laughs> and Which, it is. It is. Because really. kind of there's is. no characters from the first or second that's, movie. That's in true. This. That's true. So it kind of makes sense. It's like, okay, we're in the Fast and the Furious world, but we're going to Tokyo. Yeah. New characters, new place, new ideas. Right. It's all about street yeah. racing. And in that there's way. There's no kind yeah. of crime element. Like the first two movies have that crime element mm-hmm. where they're trying to take down a drug lord right. or that's right. a heist movie. Yeah. The third one is just about street racing. Yeah. It's a fish out of water story about this country boy who goes out to Tokyo, to learn how to drift him some cars. It's true. <laughs> That's what it's about. Yeah. And it's great. He's um, a 30 year old man in high school and it works. Right. And then the fourth film is just called Fast and Furious. Be- and th- here's why they this titled it. This is a bad that. title. <laughs> here's why they titled it. This is, this is where I draw but listen, the line. Here's their logic. Here's their I, logic. It's, it, it's a reboot. It's, it's a reboot. It's it's basically it's it's let's, it's a let's, soft reboot. Let's forget the second and third movies. Yeah, direct sequel to the first one, which is called The Fast and the Furious. Mm-hmm. So this one's just called Fast and Furious because we're taking all the elements from the first one, breaking it down to so those core characters, yeah. simplifying it, and here's our trajectory trajectory moving forward because this movie is where they start to become action movies. Mm-hmm. This has got You're an right. awesome stunt in You're the right. beginning. Yeah. Um, like I said, Dominic Toretto's back, Vin Diesel, yeah. Brian O'Connor, Paul Walker, Michelle Rodriguez, Letty Ortiz. So you would think, since this is kind of a soft reboot, Fast and Furious, yeah. that the next one would be like Fast and Furious again or whatever, you know, <laughs> it'd be a sequel. But this is a better idea than just because here's what they do that's smart. The fifth film they is start, titled, they start numbering them. The fifth film is titled <laughs> Fast Five. Yes, Fast Five. Not because it's, the Fast and Furious 5, not right. Fast and Furious 5, right. just Fast 5. Fast 5. Again, simplify it and add the number so they know where we're at. It's even more <laughs> simple. Right. But okay. it's technically, even though it's the fifth film in the franchise, it's not the fifth film chronologically. Because <laughs> as we'll discuss after the next movie, Tokyo Drift does not take place third yeah. in this franchise. Yeah. It takes place much later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Next is... Fast and Furious 6. Which which is like, okay. Look, okay, look, look, look. This is why I think it's weird. Because Fast and Furious 6 this one's is a fine title. Right. If Fast 5 was called Fast, <laughs> Fast and, and Furious, Furious 5, 5. But it's not. Right. Another weird thing about Fast 5, real quick. Okay. There should have been five main characters. <laughs> so there's, there like, there's, like, there's like 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're it doesn't right, make sense. Right. But Fast and Furious 6, here's the weird thing about this. The original title was Furious 6. Which I like a lot. Because you go Fast, Fast 5, five then Furious, Furious 6. 6. And I'm okay with that. 
the title on screen when you put in the Blu-ray, like I did this week, yeah. is Furious 6. Okay, okay. But on all the promotional material, all the posters, it's Fast and Furious 6. This is, this is so a big clash just, between artistry yes. and, and corporate technology. 100%. Big Justin clash. Lin talked about that on the commentary. It's got to be. He talked about it. He's like, yeah. marketing said we needed Fast and Furious mm-hmm. in the title. I titled it Furious 6, so that's what it is on the screen. But they retitled it in marketing, so that's the title, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't even know the title. Yeah. So call it whatever you that's want. That's a weird thing. Okay. Then the seventh film goes back. So it's like, okay, Fast 5, this Fast and a, Furious this 6. Is very messy. And then we go back. It's called Furious 7, which it is titled on screen, <laughs> Furious 7. Yeah. So, what a mess! Yeah, it's just those are kind of a mess. After but Furious Seven comes Fate of the Furious, the Fate of the Furious, which I really like because it has eight in the title. It has eight in the <laughs> title. It's kind F8. of eight. It's kind of playing, <laughs> calling back to Too Fast, Too Furious right. in that sense. Right. But, but this but... one, but see, it would have been. I think it would have been better if they called it F Eight of the Furious. So it looks like F Eight, Fate of the Furious. So that way, when you do F Nine, which is literally called F nine <laughs> right the title of that's the furious nine is f9 see how much simpler and smaller they get <laughs> right it's like it's, it's like true eventually a movie it'll just be called f <laughs> right <laughs> or just the number or just know. the number yeah i don't know at this point uh <laughs> after f9 right is fast x fast x which roman is like nu- roman numeral for 10 so, so that makes a lot so of sense think about too. it we've gone fast five <laughs> yeah furious six <laughs> Furious 7, <laughs> Fate of the Furious, F9, Fast X. Right. What a disaster. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Bonkers. But uh, anyways, they're just fun. We just had to talk about fun that titles because we have a lot of fun with that stuff. So jumping into Fast X, here's our review for Fast X. Spoiler free. Look, we're huge fans of the franchise. I think for... for to me, these movies almost can do no wrong. Can, okay, being they, a being a fan of Fast and Furious, right. you have to define. Yeah, because there are many different fans. Sure, of Fast. There's and Furious. There's the fans of the street racing who fans of fans they, of cars. They've left a long time ago. Pretty oh, much the street racing. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. there's only like one street racing scene in every movie now. They just kind of throw it in because they have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. But those fans, I feel like they kind of jump ship after. Well, the fourth I think I think they might stick around more than you think because there's also the car fans. That's true. That's true. And those, I think, they kind of yeah. cross over a lot. Good point. Good point. People who watch these movies just for the cars. Right. They just want to yes. see nice looking, right. different cars, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. They're car enthusiasts. I don't really understand that. And um, then there's the fans that just love the action. There's the there's the sports dads right. who take their kids to these movies. Right. <laughs> the sports dads who just want to watch sports and watch car explosions. Yeah. And watch action and hear totally. funny one-liners. Totally. totally. Stuff their face full of popcorn and chuckle <laughs> yeah. the whole thing. Right. And then roll their eyes when the movie's over and right. leave. Exactly. And then there's what I th- who I think we are. Yeah. Which we genuinely love movies. Yeah. So yeah, we're all about movies that do something very specific, which is movie magic. It's that it's that kind of I think you're right. That thing that you can't quite put your finger on. That's like yeah. it's big. Mm-hmm. They're all big movies. I think you're big right budgets. Too. I think that actually just, goes into my my feelings toward Fast X. Yeah. It's like the movie does things that I'm expecting. Right. It, it's very formulaic. Right. Almost all of these movies follow a very similar yes, format. Yes, sure. You kind of know <laughs> The bad guy's this kind of guy. Right. The good guy's this kind of guy. They're right. going to do this kind of thing right. and they'll end up whatever. Yep. But due to the, I don't know if it's the craft behind the camera. I think it's the craft behind the camera. I think the, film, the writing. I think the filmmakers know. truly care. I think the cast and crew of these movies really care yeah. about making a good movie. I think you're probably right. But that's something about the movie itself yes. that gets you hooked in. And it's, you kind of just have fun with it. A hundred percent is the characters. Yeah. And that's the only thing that any franchise like this can last this long is because of characters sure. that people care about. Yeah. So you either buy into the kind of, and look, the characters aren't like super relatable or, um, you know, uh, sympathetic necessarily even, or, you know, very dimensional. Sure. It's just that you, you, 
somehow connect with them and the actor it's more the actor almost than exactly. the character i was gonna say it's the a big movie. movie stars part of what i'm enjoying is the behind the scenes shenanigans yes of like the the arguments about who has how many punches <laughs> who, who can have how much screen time yes and stuff like that it's yeah. just there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot to unpack yeah in these movies right and and if you're into the behind the scenes stuff like we are you know in any in interview with vin diesel is just gold it is yeah vin diesel is the most interesting person the man, in Hollywood. The man is so invested in yes. the fast and furious movies that he has a shrine yes. in yeah. his garage right that he opens up and he just immerses yes. himself yes. completely yes. in the character of yes. dom toretta he lives this franchise yeah 100 mm-hmm. percent um, he lives his life a quarter mile at the time, <laughs> just, just like Dominic Toretto. I believe it. And uh, so he's super interesting. Um, it's almost, it's weird because I feel like half the time I'm laughing at the movie. Right, yes. But that's the thing is the but movie But I feel like knows. I'm supposed to laugh at The it. movie knows. Yeah. At this point in the franchise, they understand what the franchise is. Mm-hmm. They totally get it. They totally get their over-the-top, ridiculous... None of it makes sense. None of it's logical. Right. Physics don't matter. Yeah. They know all that stuff. Everyone has plot armor. So they just have fun with it. Yeah. They don't try to make it make sense. They don't try yeah. to make it gritty and right. grounded right. and realistic. Mm-hmm. This is a movie that's a movie. You to know what speak, I mean? To speak more specifically about Fast X. Yeah. It's the fastest and most furious these movies have been. <laughs> I agree. In, in terms of pacing, it's yeah. breakneck. It's like constantly... Totally. An action scene is happening yes. almost always. Absolutely. The moments to breathe are mm-hmm. few and far between and they're very short. Yep. And then it gets us right back to an action sequence mm-hmm. or a racing sequence or yep. whatever. Yep. Um it, it feels kind of like a big trailer. Mm. You know what I mean? It kind of has that feel of like this set piece and this set piece and this set piece and this character. Oh, they're in danger. What's gonna happen? It's kind of setting you up for Something part two and three. Later. Part, part two, two and three. three. We know we know this is the first part of a trilogy, and I think that helps going in. Yeah, knowing that this is part one, mm-hmm. this is the setup for this final story they're going to tell. It's not. It's not a self-contained story. It's not a self-contained. You'd be totally lost if you've never seen one of these movies. First of all, <laughs> these movies are more interconnected <laughs> yes. and have more continuity than the MCU. Hundred percent. Literally. Hundred percent. Like you and can they... watch Ant Man, and oh, it's right. ants. Right. And you can watch Captain America, yes. and oh, I get it. He's a right. World War II guy. And, the, and the, you don't have to know anything about anything else. Right. Fast and Furious, if you haven't seen... Every single every, movie. Every, literally every movie before this one, <laughs> I think you'll be lost. You have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Characters show up, you'll go... Characters, who's that? characters <laughs> plot devices, right. literal like things yeah. that they invented four movies ago come back. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's just weird. <laughs> totally. It's crazy. Totally. It's yeah, crazy. It's, they all, they're always referencing other characters that always. have come in and out yep. before too. It's... And it's really hard to keep track of. It is, it is, but it's fun and it's very rewarding for us. If you know yeah. what you're, if you it's know what they're rewarding. talking about, it's I, really fun. Yeah, I felt very rewarded just rewatching all these. Yeah. I was like, I totally knew where we at, where we're at, who was yeah. who, what was going on. Right. It was great. So I had a blast with it. Um, you know, again, it's over the top. It's ridiculous. The standout is Jason Momoa as this villain. He is just flamboyant and fun and off the off his rocker i mean he is cuckoo Mm -hmm. he's out for revenge he doesn't care what he's gonna do who's gonna get in his way and he's having fun doing it yeah and he was so charismatic and fun to watch on screen totally so he was he's the standout for sure yeah i agree so um look the the rest of the cast they do a fine job i had fun watching all the other characters on screen some of the new characters were kind of fun to watch brie larson had a kind of small role she had kind of a fun part Mm -hmm. alan richson i liked his part too um so yeah i had a good time watching it it's one that you know i'm excited to see where they go next it's a big cliffhanger ending so uh you know we'll have to see where they go with part two but right now look it's sad to me it was a satisfying opening to this new trilogy (laughs) i guess you could say i wouldn't say it was satisfying in in any way i know what you mean but it but i think it in time when i when i see all three right i'll appreciate it Watch them all three at once. Five hour. Just like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Five hour fast and furious. Oh, one big story. Um, so yeah, uh, I gave it four stars because I had a blast watching it. I gave and... it three. Okay. Okay. So I liked it a little more than a little you, more, but, yeah. uh, you know, um, I'm excited. You know, look, 
the family element is still present. I think that's what we really need very to talk familiar. about Fast and Furious mm-hmm. because that's really why they work because they all are about this kind of, you know, most of them aren't related, but they're a, they're a family. They're, they all spend time together. They barbecue Every together. Every movie ends with a barbecue right. and a Corona. And a prayer. And a prayer. <laughs> that's it. Every, every single one. Gotta, gotta say grace. Yep. Say grace. Yeah. Whoever eats first says grace. Yeah. <laughs> Usually Rome. That's right. So, uh, yeah, that's, I think, why these movies work. And that that element is, is definitely there in Fast X, big time. We get uncles and nephews and mm-hmm. dads and sons and yeah, wives. Yeah, it was funny, actually. There was, a grandmas. Moment, there was a moment in the theater when uh, somebody said, okay, thanks, sis. Yeah. And then someone in the theater said... They're related? Huh? <laughs> Are they actually blood relatives? He clearly didn't see F9. Didn't see F9. Uh, which is Maybe didn't bad. even see F8. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> probably saw the first one 20 years ago like oh there's a new one okay i'll take it out oh so uh yeah so anyways that's a review of fast x check it out in theaters now if you're a fast fan you're gonna get a lot out of it if you're not probably just wait go back and watch all the other ones then check it out now it's time for our fastest ranking yet the fast and furious saga ranked My number 11 is Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw. That's my number this 11 This movie well. is a big pile of poo-poo. It's so I really bad. don't like it. It's nonsense. Not good. It's, here, here's why it doesn't work. My least favorite characters in Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> because Shaw's bad. Killed Han. I know. We don't like him. I know. And Hobbs is just Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. I know. This movie, they're, eh. these two characters are too similar. That's the problem. <laughs> they're identical. They're always trying to one-up each other yep. with jokes mm-hmm. and with punches. The villain's out of control. And Idris Elba crazy. as a superhuman? What? Yeah. It's... I mean, Idris Elba's great, but why? It's why? no it's no bueno. It's okay? too much. There's it's a, too there, much. I'll it's give too... it I'll give it credit where credit's too. There's a scene where they go to Samoa and there's guys on Humvees versus guys with like wooden shields <laughs> and weapons, and it's pretty cool. That is a cool scene. The rest of the movie. I agree. I agree. It's the worst for sure. Two uh one star. We um, have different number tens. What, oh, is your, no. what is your number 10? My number 10 is Too Fast, Too uh, Furious. Oh, no. What's your number 10? My number 10 is Fate of the Furious. Oh, okay. Okay. Fate yeah, of the Furious. Like Fate this. of the Furious. Yeah. You know why I don't like this. Yeah. I don't like Dom against his family. Yeah. I, I think it. that yeah. it's too dark. the jokes don't land. I think the majority yeah. of the movie doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I think everything with Dom kind of works. Yeah. Like, even though I don't like him being pit against his family, I like right. what happens to him. I like why he does it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the rest of the movie kind of falls flat for me. Yeah, it's it's a little dark. Mm-hmm. I get it. For me, Too Fast is at 10 because it's just kind of too silly. Okay. It's, it's too right. funny. It's too just... <laughs> it doesn't quite vibe with the rest of the series. It feels I know what you mean. even more like a spinoff than Tokyo Drift in many ways. To sure, me. sure. Even yeah. though it sets up Roman and it has Brian, Brian in yeah. it, you know, it's just... It's a very simple, you know, drug lord plot. Yeah. Well, and it's Too just, Fast, Too Furious is my number nine. So, okay, well, yeah. my number nine is Fate of the Furious. Um, oh, okay. So okay, ours are just switched. A little swap. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I, I get I get it because Fate of the Furious, I feel like it's too dark. Sure. You know, but it is the one right after they lost Paul Walker. I think, I think, I think that's why. I think Too Fast has a little bit more personality. I think it's okay. a little bit more fun. Um, and I think that it's just so funny to laugh at. It is. Because it's kind of terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they kind of know it's terrible right, and right. they have fun with that. Right. I, I prefer Fate slightly, I think, because of the big action scenes, you know, the sub versus okay. the cars on the ice. Sure. I, I have a lot sure. of fun with that. The scene in New York City with the zombie cars, everybody versus Dom is so cool. Okay. Okay. So much cool stuff. The, I just like the street racing in too. The baby carrier fight scene. The baby carrier I mean, fight there, scene is there's cool. There's so many moments yeah. that I think are are cool okay. and fun to watch. So that's why I have it there. My number eight is The Fast and the Furious. Oh, the original. Okay. The Fast and the Furious. See, I have Tokyo Drift at eight. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I like Tokyo Drift a little bit more because it's it's totally its own movie. Like, yes, it, it yes, doesn't total, even feel like yeah. a Fast and Furious movie right, at all. Right, exactly. It feels like it's just a movie about Han, who yes. is like my favorite character in all of these movies. Yeah. I, I wish it was more about him. Sure. And sure. not about... Not about Country Boy. Country Boy. But I, I, I kind of like Country Boy. I think he's kind of funny. He's fine. He's fine. He's not terrible. He's he's but a he's, 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 he's a very not, toast kind of you know. Yeah. He's a very guy. not a very compelling but character. The Fast and the Furious. This movie is basically a ripoff of Point Break, in every yeah, sense. Sure. 
except instead of surfing, it's street racing. Yes. Um, they're stealing DVD players. Yep. It's not bad, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's great. It, I'm actually surprised it got a sequel and now it's a big mega franchise. Mm -hmm. It had to go through a lot of evolution to become what it is today. Yeah. It's too much of a product of its time, I feel. Mm. It's not timeless at all. It mm. feels very much like a 2000s when everybody was obsessed with cars. For it's almost so much of its time that it is timeless. <laughs> kind of like Back to the Future. Like a time capsule. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's my number seven. That's why I'm talking about it. Right all right. Because I think this is a cool movie. I think it is actually it has a lot of very kind of exciting action sequences, even though it's, you know, I mean, compared to where it goes, it's obviously very simple and kind of just mm -hmm. straightforward. Um, but this is where we meet all the characters. You're this right. Great You're right. characters yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Great character dynamics. Yeah. You know, uh, there are a couple missing tropes for the later on movies. Sure, sure. But Which I don't mind because it's fine. the first one. It's the first one. Um it's cool. the, and like you're saying the whole exploration of that our subculture. Sure. That was popular sure. during the early 2000s yeah. that you know was totally explored here in a really unique way and yeah. very authentic way. I feel it's very authentic. Okay. Okay. So that's well, why I my num a lot. my number 7 is Fast and Furious. Not to be confused with The Fast and the Furious, which is my number 6. <laughs> Okay, well, my six is Fast and Furious. So. Oh, okay. So we have that so, swapped here. Fast and Furious. <laughs> Whatever that movie is, that's I, our number so this, six. This is the movie Seven. that got me hooked. The first three, I, I was like, these are okay. These are, they're fine. Like, why is this a nine film saga? Yeah. At that point, it was mm -hmm. nine movies. And so this one was the one where I went, oh, okay. This is, this is an action franchise now. Yeah. This is, we're doing big car stunts and we've got the family. It's all about the family mm -hmm. coming together to yeah. pull off some big heist or big, you know, stop big, some big drug lord or some, some big crime plot right. involved in it. Yeah. And it hooked me in with the emotion, what happens to Letty. Mm -hmm. And it hooked mm -hmm. me in with, you know, again, bringing Brian O'Connor back, yeah. bringing Vin Diesel as, as Dom back. That core cast really, coming back was, was really what When they rebooted, me. they really course corrected. 100%. And it works. It 100%. works really well. And it set the precedent for, I think, some of the better movies later down the line. For sure. uh, my number six is Fast Five. Okay. Okay. So okay. Fast, Fast Five, five, have Fast that one five takes Fast and Furious and is better. Much better. In pretty much every way. It perfects it. It perfects it. I wouldn't would quite say perfects it. To me, it. it basically perfects the fast formula is okay. what i'll call it okay it's it's this is the movie where like like the fourth one was like where okay we're going in this new direction mm -hmm. fast five was like here's what we're doing from now okay on. yeah this is the formula mm -hmm. this is what we're doing it's an action movie with crazy car stunts yeah. and it's all about the family here's our villain and, and it, it does that whole thing yeah so i'm a huge fan of fast five i, I have it much higher but okay. why is it okay. why is it here for you um i think it's just all around solid. I don't think it does anything different. Special, nothing yeah. really mm -hmm. to set itself apart from okay. some of the other ones that I like more. Okay. Um, that's okay. why. That's why it's a little bit lower. Gotcha. So what do you have at five? My five is Tokyo Drift, oh. which I think is very, very personable. Right, I think it has right. very much of its own identity. Yep. Uh, it's very colorful, which I love. It, it kind of, if I had to compare it to a movie visually, I would say something like Speed Racer, Speed Racer yeah. <laughs> which is just a colorful explosion right. constantly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm, I think it has it has some redeeming qualities. There's the Hulk car. The Hulk car is cool. So what's your number? Bow Wow, Bow wow was disappointed he got a van. Yeah. It's a van. Yeah. He's like, why do I have a van? <laughs> <laughs> what's your five? Um, my five is F9. Okay. okay. So F9, I really like F9. This is love for me. I think F9 is incredible. F9 is great. Look, this is the first one we saw in theater. Yeah. So this was a big deal. It is a big deal. The build up to this movie was huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had a blast watching it. Look, these top five, they're all great movies. Yeah. I, I consider all these four star films at least. Okay. So F9 is on rewatch. It's a little much. <laughs> it's it's a little like. Okay. It's First of all, it's Justin Lin returning after yeah. being gone for seven and eight. Sure. So he comes back after, you know, he had done six. So now he's back. And it's all about, you know, justice for Han. Obviously, that whole subplot is a big part oh, of this yeah. movie. And that works really well. Well worth the price of admission um, to get justice for Han. I like what they did with Mia, bringing her back mm -hmm. and giving her a bigger role. Yeah. Um, I feel like 
the stuff with um, John Cena as yeah. Jacob Toretto yeah. is good, but could have been handled a little better okay. on rewatch. Okay. When I rewatched it, I was like, it kind of works. It kind of doesn't. Their their whole falling out, I think, works. The flashbacks mm-hmm. are great. Absolutely. We finally get like Dom's Stand. origin. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. which we hear, hear about in the first their very first movie. Absolutely. We get that fully yeah. fleshed out. It's amazing. Um, that works really well. I just feel like it doesn't. There's just certain things that hold it back. It goes on a little too long. Okay. It feels like certain things aren't quite earned. Sure. Um, so that's why for me it's at it's at five. Okay. I don't know. What's well, your, my what's, my number that, four. Okay, you're at four. I already did my okay. my okay. five was Tokyo Drift. Okay, my right. four is Fast X. That's my four. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. It's that easy top five. It's good, but it's it's hard to say that it's one of the best among the best once we see the trilogy it might be yeah, number three we might look back on two. it and be like oh that's right set up all the stuff that i love right, so right. It's like that's why i think tokyo drift is higher for me because it's set upon and Han's like my favorite right, that's, that's why right. nine is a little bit higher for me but sure sure yeah fast x we already talked in, in length about it yeah um it's solid mm-hmm. but it's it's not a complete movie Right. Big cliffhanger ending, yeah, yeah. but it's a great setup. It's a great introduction to our villain. At any point in time, I could glance at this movie and something entertaining would be happening. 100%. What's your number three? My number three is Fast Five. Okay. I'm a huge okay. fan of Fast Five. Rewatching Fast Five was hey, a joy. I don't blame you. Um, and it five. plays into Fast X. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a huge plot plot element of Fast X yeah. is what happens at the end of Fast Five with the, the vault heist. I mean, that's such an icon. I feel like that's still the most iconic moment of the franchise. Yeah, is that vault heist through Rio? I think you're right. Just demolishing the city. Yeah, yeah. and going on that bridge right. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It just works really well. Yeah. This is where we bring in Hobbs, who yep. this is his best role of the franchise because he's Hobbs. used very well. Yeah, he's yeah. used first of all as an antagonist most of the movie. Sure, and he does a great job playing an antagonist. Yeah. And then, you know, what they do with him on flipping him around and why he, you know, joins the team and okay. that whole thing. I thought all that worked super well. Yeah. Um, his fight with Vin is awesome and yeah. uh, just great, great heist action movie. This one feels tight. I know it's over two hours, but it feels tight. Okay. It feels like there's not a wasted moment and cool. it's still character focused, sure. which I like. Sure. That's great. So that's why it's at, that's uh, why it's at number three. My number three is Furious 7. Okay, that's my number two. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So Furious 7, this is the great beginning of the end. Of, this is the great end of the road. Yeah. Was it the first end of the road? It was the... It or was, was it the third end of the this road? This was the one last ride. Oh, okay. This is the last ride. The last okay. Ride. Okay. This isn't the end of the road. No, no, no. It's this just the, the last, last ride. ride. Right. Yeah, exactly. This is... So this is a great film. This is yeah, my Furious, number two Furious because... Furious 7 I like a lot. Because it's... It's, you, it's, it's hard. you can't talk about it's it without very talking strong. about Paul Walker, obviously. Yeah, yeah. This is his last movie mm-hmm. he ever made. He died in it's, an it's unrelated amazing, It's accident. amazing that he, he passed away in the middle of filming it. Mm-hmm. And unless you knew beforehand, it's almost totally you seamless. Yeah. Like yeah. They, they actually worked his character mm-hmm. and his the story of his character in a mm-hmm. way that really felt natural and yes. worked. And with it's, the, a great, the story. it's a great send-off, great send-off. for Brian yeah. as a character mm-hmm. and for Paul Walker. I mean, yeah. it, it is... It gets me every time. It's so emotional. It is. It, it's really strong. So good. Mm-hmm. So this one works on another level yeah. that a lot of the other ones don't. And it still has the crazy car stunts. I mean, driving cars through buildings, skyscrapers, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, mm-hmm. great stuff. Really yeah. enjoy it. Really enjoy um, Jason Statham as Shul. I think he's a great villain. I think he's really good in this. The opening wonder in the hospital with yeah. him is great. And, this is when James Wan came in and directed mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, he went on to do Aquaman and he's you know known for most of his horror movies. Yeah. But this one is just an action extravaganza with a really deep emotional impact as well. So. All right. So that was your number two. My number two. My number two is F9. F9. I like F9. F9 is great. F9 to me. It the, is. The, the actual filmmaking behind F9. Yeah is a step up yeah from what we've yeah. had before it's more colorful mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's more dynamic there's drone shots there's right. the, the car chases seem a little bit more uh 
uh, dangerous in some right, sequences. Right, right. Uh, there, there's cool inventive things that they do with the cars, like sure. harpoons that shoot off mm-hmm, of them and mm-hmm. you know, different kinds of stuff. The magnets. The magnets. <laughs> all the magnets, great. yeah. Um, it's it's really fun. It's a really good movie. I saw it in the theater. Mm-hmm. That's probably a big reason why I like it a lot. I just enjoy that. Yeah. Um, I caught it on TV at one point mm. and was just watching it. I'm like, wow. It was right the opening scene, that whole flashback. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. wow, <laughs> this is really different than the rest. This it is really is. special. And they shot all that in, on film. Yeah. The original yeah. flashbacks are all right. Yeah. Really nice thing. That's all grainy, grainy. and oldie. It's good. Super cool. I like, right. I like F9 a lot. I think our collective number one. Number one, best Fast and Furious movie. Fast, Fast and, and Furious, Furious 6. Six. Yeah. Or Furious 6, if you're Justin Lin. Sure. If you look at the title card. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. This is the perfect blend of it all. Right. It is. You've got the, the perfect balance. You've got the family. Mm-hmm. You've got the car stunts. Yep. You got the great villain Owen Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, uh, Dan- or no, no, yeah. This is Owen Shaw. Yes, Deckard Shaw is correct. Is Jason Statham. Correct. Um, yeah, you've got every element you could possibly want. This one, so this one is the the basic plot is you know a, revolves around Letty and her amnesia, mm-hmm. which you know people make fun of Fast for all of its kind of soap opera tropes. You know the the son you didn't hey, know about the, soap opera tropes. <laughs> Sometimes they work. They, I mean, there's a reason they're tropes. Exactly. Yeah, there's a reason exactly. they always happen. It's if they're done well. If they're done well, they really work. If they're done well. I think I think it's done well here. I really buy into I it. I really like her dynamic with everyone. Dom. Everyone in this movie is at the height of their powers. Totally. Okay. Totally. Han and Giselle. Yes. Beautiful. Best. Best. Beautiful Best. stuff. Yeah. Literally, sure. literally my favorite stuff in the mm-hmm. entire franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it's great. It's so it's good. Great we, we've got the tank sequence the on tank the highway. Se- the street racing sequence. We've got street racing. We go back to race wars, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Dom invented race wars. <laughs> no, that's seven. Oh, that's seven. That's seven. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. This is when Letty's on. <laughs> right. She's on. So she's this on. Is, she's gone rogue. This is the Mirror Universe team. If, if you're, if you're a Star Trek fan, you'll know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So we get basically the evil doppelgangers of our crew. That's right. Um. Which and they're all great. I mean, really enjoy all their roles. We get Hobbs back mm-hmm. in a great role, yeah. uh, and it's just epic action. I mean, there's three huge set pieces, not just the tank one. There's also the plane scene at the end, which to me yeah. is the best finale they've had yet. I think so too. It is incredible. I mean, the runway is you know it'd have to be like 26 miles long, but it's so good. I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't matter because. There's fights on the runway with cars chasing the plane. There's car- fights going on inside the plane, you know. There's, and they converge. There's going there's like on someone inside the plane through going, the plane. <laughs> through the plane, yeah. Everything happens here. It is insane. It is so much fun to watch. It's a great blend. I was watching some behind the scenes. I think if I if I had to only watch one, mm. it would be the sixth. This would be the one because it's got everything. It you don't really. It kind of works on its own. Works on its own, and it's. The perfect ending. If they were going to end the franchise, yeah, anywhere. If I had to pick one movie to end on, it would be this one, because the the final barbecue is just it's everyone's there. Mm-hmm. Everyone's Everyone back. is there. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. It is. I but, agree. But we do lose characters too. There's stakes here, You're right? That's what I like about this movie. Is like there's stakes, and this is the reason Han goes to Tokyo, and then we get Tokyo Drift. So Tokyo Drift actually takes place after six. <laughs> And then seven, eight, nine, ten happens. So time uh, travel. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Fast and Furious Six. Before we wrap Definitely up our it. list of the Furious, yeah. we've got to mention a movie we both adore called Better oh. Luck Tomorrow. Absolutely. This would have been my number one, although it's technically not considered a Fast and Furious movie. Well, it's considered a Fast and Furious movie by several people who are involved in the franchise. Okay. All right. Uh, I just don't think the studio has officially recognized it yet. Yeah, yes, Better Luck Tomorrow is directed by Justin Lin, mm-hmm. who directed 3, 4, 5, 6, 9. And it's basically a prequel origin story for Han. Um, That's right, baby. Sung Kang plays the character. His yep. name is Han in the movie. Yep. And there we go. It's just about him living life. It's actually it's actually a, a really good movie that yeah. is unlike all of these. It's, right. just a, it's like a drama about right. a guy out of high school right. who gets into like a lot of serious trouble right. and has to, you know, find a way to make money and all this stuff. And right. it's uh it's I've never seen a movie quite as frantic and mm-hmm. also uh vibrant as that. Yes. It's it's really good. It's it's super solid. 
definitely worth a watch if you're a fan of the franchise or not. Um, because like I said, it's not a car racing movie. It's it's its own thing. Yeah. But yeah, we had to mention that one for sure. Well, that's it, folks. That is our ranking of the entire Fast Saga. That's it. Uh, what will soon be a 12 film franchise. One of the longest running in film history. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is... Catching up most- to Bond. The most, Catching up to Bond. It's the most unexpected thing. I know. They've surpassed Star Wars. They've surpassed, you know, I mean, they're catching up with Star Trek. Um, it's incredible. So amazing franchise. We adore for so many reasons. And uh, hopefully you get a kick out of them too. Let us know your review of Fast X if you got to see it this weekend. Also, give us your ranking of the entire Fast Saga below. We want to know what your ranking is thanks carson for joining me thanks for having me this was fast it was furious it was all about family salutis familia absolutely los bandoleros for life we'll see you guys later thank you for joining us right here on the real world